Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy Fogarty here from theathomewelder.com and I'm here for kingmetals.com. Today, we're gonna answer some questions about welding wire and which welding to wire, which welding wire to use and when, and can your machine even use different wires? So we're gonna go all over that right now in the shop. So a very common question that we get in is, when should I use different size wires and what size wires can my machine use? And can I just put that wire into the machine? That's a lot of questions kind of packed into one. So we're gonna break those down here. But first, let's go into when you should use different size wires and how to know which wires you should be using. Now, right from the bat, I'll go ahead and tell you that most people using, doing any kind of welding at their houses or even small shops really aren't gonna go anything over a .035. Now, that's used generally welding smaller materials. So, you know, anything from uh, cap, you know, railings and cap rails, like this is a larger size cap rail. You can still use a, a 030 wire on this. And, you know, small angle iron pieces. And, you know, when you get into really delicate materials like this stamped steel here, you're gonna to wanna to go with a smaller wire, like 0 0.023. And that's because you won't be burning through it or globbing that wire on. If you think of it this way, the thicker your wire, well, the more material you have in that wire. So uh, the, the more weld you're actually gonna be uh, dealing with. Now, when you start getting into a lot of this uh, thicker stuff, like quarter inch, half inch, and above the solid stuff, you're gonna to wanna to bump your wire up. Now. So, but when do you really know when to do that? Now, an easy way to be able to tell uh, if you even have the capabilities to do that with your machine is simply by looking on your machine. Now, I have a little bit larger machine here. It's a, this is a Miller 210, but even like the smaller home units, like a, a 135 or a 110 or something like that, uh, whether it be Lincoln, Hobart, Miller, it doesn't matter the brand, they're gonna have these charts on there. And the charts aren't gonna give you any information above what your machine is gonna be able to handle. So it's very simple to look at these charts and it, can, it will tell you uh, different variances depending on uh, gas, if you're using flux core or using gas shielded, or if you're using different types of gas, uh, the different thicknesses of material. So it will not only tell you the size of uh, wire that you need to be using, but it'll also give you your welder settings as well, which is key. What do you do when you need to use different size wires? Can you just feed that wire through? Well, no, you do have to make an adjustment on your machines. And this is gonna be the case no matter what kind of machine you're using. Making that adjustment is fairly simple, but you do have to go through the motions of taking it apart a little bit. And what we're gonna have to do is actually pull a little part of our drive motor out we're gonna turn it around and just put it back on. That's what I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so all these machines are gonna be created pretty much the same. You're gonna have some sort of tensioner and this is gonna have like a clamp that's gonna come down and push down on your wire feeding through here. Now, my machine has two rollers, uh, but most smaller machines, they only have one and even some larger ones only have one. And you just have this tension pushing down on that one roller. So if we undo this, we can see that here's our wire and it's running through the grooves that are on this roller. Now, your machine is gonna be pretty identical to mine in which we're gonna have one thing, just one thing that we need to unscrew or loosen to pull this motor off or the roller off and turn it around. Now, you might have to pull your screw all the way out. You might have a wing nut. It doesn't matter, you're just gonna have one thing that you're gonna to have to loosen. And in my case, I just have to twist this. It's kind of like a locking mechanism. And these grooves, this uh, pin here kind of lines up with these grooves and I can just pull mine right off and turn it around. Now you can see those grooves here that we have. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty easy. Now you'll see, now it should be on your motor or your roller what it is you'll have the markings here. It should tell you which size is your groove. Hopefully you have that. But if you don't have that, it's worn off and you have an old machine, you can, it's really pretty simple, pretty clear to look at these grooves and see which one is bigger than the other. So you can see here, 
I have here's my 03 groove and here's my 035 or 9 millimeter however you want to uh, measure it so we just take that we're gonna put that back on there put our 030 oops, sorry 035 on there tighten that and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one up here now you might need to adjust your tension once you change the size of your wire uh, just you might not but just keep that in mind so if you have a little issue with your wire not feeding through smoothly check the tension first now the most common size welding wires are going to be your 023, 030, 035, 040 is kind of the highest point where it's, it's most commonly used in, in everyday shops. So you can pick up those size wires at most local hardware stores, Home Depots, Lowe's, uh, just your local hardware store. Just keep in mind that those places are going to be a little more expensive than if you say ordered it online from King. Uh, just simply because they put a higher markup on these things. So if you want to save a little bit of money and, and make it easier on yourself, just have stuff delivered to you, just go online and order it from places like King. All right, so that's it for this one. I hope that answers your questions about different size MIG wire and whether or not you can use it in your machine and how to change your machine so that you can use different sizes. Uh, so that's it. I am Andy Fogarty for theathomewelder.com and for kingmetals.com. Now look, if you have more questions about MIG wire or how to change your wire, MIG liner, the, the liner that goes in your gun to, that your wire runs through if you need to change those, or different settings for your MIG liner, MIG welder, come over to the YouTube channel where we have everything all laid out for you, very simple, and we have all those tutorials there for you to watch and learn. So that's it, I'm Andy Fogarty, and if you want more great tips and tips like this, come over to theathomewelder.com, sign up, join us completely free. We're gonna show you how to do some simple welding stuff, but more importantly, we're gonna give you uh, weekly tips and tricks on DIY welding, and even how to make some money from it on the side, if that's what you're looking to do. So that's it, I'm Andy Fogarty, I'll see you again next time.